guys, it's Lauren. Today I'm here to talk to you about one of my all-time favorite painting techniques, and that is the paint pour. I love paint pouring. I think it's really unpredictable. It's a lot of fun. It's messy. I just have a great time every time I do it, whether it's here in the studio with you guys or at home on my own. So I just wanna go over some of the techniques that I use that I think are a lot of fun, and that could be helpful if you guys are doing it at home and you may not know where to start. So I just wanted to talk a little bit at first about the few art box options that we offer through the brush bar. Um, number one, we have the Galaxy Paint Pour. So you guys may have seen this before. It was our first paint pouring kit. It comes with a lot of these Galaxy themed co colors, um, some sparkles, a little bit of white paint so you can paint some stars on there. So if you're looking for one that's maybe a little bit more guided and you don't have to worry about choosing colors that work well together, this is a really good option. In my opinion, they come out great every time. We also have an art box kit where you guys can choose your paint colors, which again is a lot of fun because that way you can match it to either your decor or if you just have favorite colors that you want to do. It's a lot of fun and it will kind of keep you inspired as you go. So that's what I'll be doing today, just doing some of the paint colors that I've chosen that I think may look really well together. So again, if you want to experiment a little bit more and you just want to do the colors of your choice, you can do that. Now in terms of what we're doing it on, we're gonna stick with that 12 by 12 canvas. I think it's a great size. Any bigger for me is a little hard to control, but if you guys have any smaller canvases at home, sometimes that's a good option as well. The ones that come in the kit though will be the same size as the other art boxes, that 12 by 12. I also brought a few other things to show you guys because with paint pouring, let's say you really like this and you wanna get into it, you can do a lot of things. You can, number one, Paint on top of colored canvases. So this is an old canvas that I had that I messed up on and I painted it gray. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna use it um, for again. So in this case, if I wanna use it for a paint pour, the paint color will probably cover the, the darker gray color up, which is nice. I've never met <laughs> a painted canvas that I couldn't cover up with a paint pour. I think it just depends on the colors that you're using, but for the most part, you can cover up some of the darker colors, which is really nice. Also, I have this canvas here that we use for an old painting that we have an outline on. So this is something I can totally cover up with a paint pour, and that way I can reuse it. It's not just sitting there um, on the shelf for the rest of oblivion. <laughs> also, something that's really fun to do, in my opinion, are wood cutouts. This is something that I brought from home, but I just wanna um, really say that you guys can be creative with this. I have people do sometimes three-dimensional objects, um, even though we're working on a flat surface today, and that's a great place to start. Sometimes you can really play around with things that you already have in your house. In this case, something that I already had in my house, this cutout. So just to show you guys, you're not limited to canvas. Um, it's a good, again, learning place for you, but you can really go a lot of places with paint pour, which is some of the reason that I think it's so fun. I think there's a lot to do with it. Um, so I have a blank canvas here, so I'm gonna show you guys on this, just so it's easy to see on the camera. And I've chosen my paint colors. I have white, orange, red, teal, and black today. Now you're gonna get your little paint colors in the kit in a little container just like this. What I usually recommend that you do before you get it is to just shake it up. Now in this container, it's not just paint. There is paint in here. And there's also a paint pouring medium that we've stirred into your paint. So that's why I just give it a little bit of a stir right before I'm ready to use it, just so it's nice and ready to go. If you see a little bit of variation in the color, that's a-okay. Um, the medium is like a lighter base, so it's gonna look lighter than it's actually gonna dry. So don't, don't worry, this will be like a true purple, even though it looks slightly lighter in here, but you don't have to stir it with anything if you give it, again, a good mix just by shaking it. So these are the containers that your colors will come in. Now, a few other things. I usually wear gloves during this process. It's not like you have to, but this paint is super messy. You're gonna, go, you're gonna find out real quick that this whole process is messy. Definitely wanna have some sort of table cover down. You'll get one in your kit. If you're a little worried, just kind of make sure you're in an area where maybe little kids can't bump the table or a pet because these take an entire overnight cycle to dry. So really be extra careful, do it out of the way, make sure whatever you're doing it on is protected, it'll be worth it in the end, okay? You're also gonna get some cups in your kit. So there's a few things that you're gonna use your cups for 
Number one, I'm gonna be doing a dirty pour technique, which a dirty pour is just pouring paint into the cup and then flipping it over on the canvas. That is my personal favorite technique for paint pouring, so that's the one that I wanna show you guys today. There's some other cups if you wanna use them as stands. Um, you can use any size cup, like I think usually we use cups that are a little bit taller than this. Anything around the house, like if you have some old pickle jars, anything that you wanna elevate this off the table, you can. So if you were to do that, you can take your cups, you can turn them either way, and I usually just place them in the corners and I make it nice and tight, and that way it's kind of sturdy. If you're worried, you can get, again, another thing underneath it, some kind of block, um, and you can center it, and that way you'll just have it nice and sturdy standing off your paper. Now, you certainly can put your canvas directly on your paper. I've done that before, too, um, just if you're worried about it kind of wobbling or the cup's not being sturdy enough. You can do that. It's just what you're going to want to do is leave it on the paper overnight to dry. You don't want to peel it away while it's still wet. And then when it's dry the next day, you can kind of peel the dried bits of paper off the back. I've done that a million times. It works great every time. I just want to show you guys it on the cups in case you want to elevate your canvas. This way the excess paint drips off onto the paper and your canvas obviously will not stick on the paper, which is kind of nice. Just whatever you feel comfortable with. So let me position this. It's pretty sturdy. I have them each in the corners here. Now let's talk dirty pour technique. So we're going to take our cup, our main cup, and you guys are gonna start, like I said, layering your paint colors on top of one another. Now, in terms of paint colors, you guys have the whole rainbow in front of you. You can select your different paint colors and it really is totally up to you. I'm just using the paint colors that come right out of the pump. So this is straight red, straight orange. Again, they look a little bit lighter because of the medium that they've been mixed with, but they'll dry a little bit darker. Now you guys can adjust colors if you want to. Um, let's say you're not a big fan of straight white and you wanna make your orange a little bit lighter. You could just dump some of your white in your orange, lighten that up. You could do the same thing with your red and make it pink. So that's another option. You guys will have to stir that up. Like you can use popsicle sticks or like take out plastic cutlery is really great for something like this. Just something you're not obviously gonna use <laughs> to eat off of. Um, once this paint dries on that stuff, it's really hard to clean off. So you can always adjust your colors in that way. I actually like using the colors right out of the, the pump because I think that they're really bold and I like that in a paint pour. I think paint color variety is really important. I think that that's one of the biggest tips that I can give you guys. Let's say you love pastels, which I do. I think pastels are wonderful. Now, when you have it in a paint pour, you have pastel pink, you have pastel purple, you have pastel teal. Let's say you did something like that. Those tones are all really similar. Even though they're the same color, they're all based with this white paint, having a lot of white paint. So when you put it on your paint pour, they're gonna kind of soften and merge together. You're not really gonna get these bright cells coming through. Now the colors will look really, really nice, but if you want something that's more vibrant and really gonna pop, you need to stick with more vibrant colors right out of the paint pour. It's also one of the reasons I like using white and black in every one of my pours, because these colors, they are the most vibrant out of all the shades, and the reason is their opacity. They are gonna show up. Your white is gonna mix in a little bit with the other colors. Your black is gonna mix in with the other colors, and you're gonna get this whole range of tones in between. So I always recommend white and black. Do what you'd like, of course, but you can watch me and see how you like it. Now, just to remind you guys, we never know how this paint pour is gonna turn out. There's no way to predict it. Believe me, I've tried. I've done every different type of pour um, that you can imagine, and it's just, sometimes they turn out wonderful, and sometimes I'm like, yeah, you know, next time, maybe I didn't want to add that much black. <laughs> so you can really kind of, you don't, what I would suggest to you is use the colors you'd like. If you don't really like black, don't use a lot of it. You can use a little of it. There's no rules. I do want to fill up most of my cup with the paint. I'd rather have too much paint than too little. Okay, so let's say I really, really like red. Maybe I'll do a lot of red in this painting. I really like the teal, but maybe I'll just do a touch a black or orange or white. So that's kind of the 
best way that you can try to control it is just if you have a favorite color, use a lot of that color. <laughs> and if you have a least favorite color, maybe don't go overboard on that because I can't tell you how many times I've seen this where your least favorite color will take over your entire canvas. So sometimes it's just what happens and it's part of the unpredictability and, and part of the fun, to be honest. So I'm gonna start by layering the colors. I have no rhyme or reason to this. The thing that I suggest that you do though is pour down the cup. So I'm gonna to start to fill this up and I'm gonna start layering different paint colors. So let's start with my teal. Pour some red down there. And I'm just going down the side of a cup just because I don't want them to mix up too much before I do the paint pour. Let's do a little more teal. You don't have to go in the same order every time. A little bit of black, getting strong, super strong color. I'm getting close to filling up my cup and I still have some paint left over. Not a ton, but I still have some. And I do like that actually, because that way if I need to like go over my corners or if there's any little last spots, whoops, told you it was messy, <laughs> that I need to cover up, I have a little bit of extra there that I can use. But for the most part, you guys will see my cup is almost full. No matter what size cup we give you, you wanna fill it up pretty close to the top. And then it's just really pretty on top and it's gonna change a lot because we're doing a dirty pour. So how you do that is you wanna take your canvas, you're gonna put it back down on these cups, but for now, I want you to flip it over so that you're laying it on top of your cup, hold the back of the canvas and then flip. Make sure you have this cup in firm grasp. And then when you're done, I can flip it back over and put it on my cups again or not. Like I said, you can set it down if you'd like. Now we're ready to actually do the pour. So you can slowly lift this up or you can just go for it. Sometimes I like to just lift it up a little bit on the side. Once it's gonna start going, it's gonna start going. And then I just kind of pull it away. One of the reasons I did this color combination is I've seen it done in our classes before. It's not something I would have thought of, but I think the teal and the red in particular look really nice together. Now let's talk about the way that this looks before we do anything else. I can see these different layers of color. Look at that almost like gray shade that I've gotten from my white and my black mixing, even though I, I don't think I ever poured those right next to each other. Now we're gonna start tilting this to make the paint go in different directions. So you wanna keep in mind, if you have an area that you really like, you may wanna tilt in that direction last. I really like this area, this area, this area, more than the darker color. So I think I'm gonna start by tilting in that direction first. The cells are starting to appear, which is one of the reasons I do dirty pores. I like the way that it looks, these little cells, that's what I mean by these little circles. I just kind of start to go up and down my canvas. You're gonna lose some things that you really like probably, but you'll probably get some that you, again, weren't expecting towards the end. And you have to kind of be careful. There's only so much you can control, but you may be able to keep the cells around if you're careful with your pour. Your paint is gonna to start to drip on your table. That's okay. I can see I've really actually lost a lot of this area. So what I'm hoping is that once I move my canvas kind of back in the other direction, it'll come back. I can see these beautiful cells starting to form. This is part of the reason why we use a lot of paint is we want it to do this. I wanna be able to go all the way to my edges or at least almost cover my edges because again, those edges can be covered with the extra paint in my uh, little jars there. Those cells look so pretty there in the corner. I don't wanna lose all of those. So let's try and control that a little bit and then back it up, back it up. This corner is kind of the one here by my right hand, the one that I need to fill in the most. Be a little bit careful because I don't want to lose such a pretty color that I have going. Actually, I think I'll show you guys a cool technique that I 
I use, just be careful, don't touch the top of your canvas. This is getting messy, your gloves are gonna get messy. That's kind of the nice thing about the, the cups is you can kind of set it down and move it. Whereas once it's on the paper, it's pretty much stuck on there. So look at this, I've got some awesome cells forming in here. That's from the paint medium. There's a few areas that don't have as many cells, but I think it looks nice. It almost looks oceanic there. Um, but I wanna cover up some of this stuff here. So now you guys have a few options. You can either put more paint in your cup. You can see if you have anything left there and just kind of fill in those corners. Sometimes that's nice because it there is that color variety that's already in your cup. You can also put more paint in here and do that. You can kind of drip it on there. Also, don't hesitate to take paint right out of your cup. You can even do lines through your painting. I really like the way this is turning out, so I don't know if I want to do that, although I honestly usually do. <laughs> I usually will just do like a strip all the way through. So that's kind of another pouring technique where you can just take your cups and drag them in lines. Like I see if people do totally different techniques every time I do this. You can also take your finger. This glove is a little bit too big, but I'm just gonna take my finger and kind of drag some of that paint down. If there's like little spots, I might have to go over that corner, but I guess on the sides of the canvas, cause you guys will notice the canvases all have these edges and I don't want to leave those edges uncovered. So I'm just going to kind of take my finger where I can and cover the white or just drag down what's already dripping on the side. I think I need a little bit more color over here. Sometimes the edges don't bother people. Everybody's going to be a little bit different with what they like. I like my edges to be painted. I'm just kind of feeling this because I can't see. I may be messing up some really beautiful colors down there, but since I can't see and I'm on this side of the camera. Oops, see, good example. I just swiped that with my glove. So something you guys can do. Either you can leave it and it'll kind of dry, or I can see if I can even that out a little bit. I don't want to lose anything that I've done, but this might actually help me because this upper right area here, I love it. So maybe I'm just going to kind of scoot down some paint and see if that helps to even it out. Still looks like my glove hit it. So... We're gonna do that good old dirty pour again with a little bit of my paint and just kind of go over that edge. I'm not gonna set my cup down. Just gonna give it maybe a good swirl. Look at my table and look at my gloves. <laughs> but look at my painting, I think it looks super great. Now, like I was saying earlier, what you guys need to do is let this dry overnight. Sometimes it will take even a little bit longer than 24 hours to dry. You'll notice that it's gonna start to mattify. Get these guys off. It's gonna start to mattify. So right now it is incredibly shiny. You're gonna lose that shine when it dries. That's just the nature of the paint. You can do a few things to get that shine to come back. Um, after you guys are done, which something you can do is seal it with some kind of coating. So sometimes people will use like a gloss, um, just kind of a gloss sealant that you can find at any hobby store. Sometimes they make spray sealants. That's going to give it a little bit of a shine. This level of a shine, you need something like resin, which is a very cool technique that I've done plenty of times, but that is a hassle as well. 
worth it, but it's a hassle. So I want you guys to take a look at it tomorrow and see if there's anything that you wanna to do to it. You don't need to seal it with any kind of varnish, just like you don't need to seal any of the other paintings that we have, they're fine. But if you wanna get that added shine, sometimes you can, you can do that as well. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this dry and then we'll check in on what it looks like when it's completely dry, maybe tomorrow or the next day. And that way we can talk a little bit about how it looks when it dries. So hope you guys enjoyed your dirty pour. If you're ready, get to it. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm back. It has been a day since I've done my paint pour. So it has dried up nicely. There's no kind of wet center to it. Again, it doesn't look shiny at all. I can tell it's completely matte, so it's nice and safe to pick up. So let me show you guys the end result. It's so pretty. I love it. You see all these nice tones in there that I didn't even intend to have. Like there's almost this purple color and you guys know I didn't use purple in my paint pour. So it's just one of those happy little accidents that we get from a painting like this, which is a lot of fun. So I hope you guys are ready. You're ready to go with all your different paint colors that you've chosen for your paint pour. And I just hope you have a lot of fun with it. So don't hesitate to show us on social media. We love to see these guys. You can tag us at The Brush Bar on Facebook and Instagram. Um, I just think that these are some of my favorite things to watch people do, whether you guys send us a video of your process or the end result, we'd love to see it. Give me another idea for the next paint pour that I do, just like the customer did for this one. So I hope you guys have a lot of fun, enjoy your time, and get messy. Bye.